So the condition needs to be that the value of i must be greater than 0. So we will have a list that will get reversed and it will start from the 11, the value of 11 and it will end at 1. Because we said that the end of the list shall be 0, so the program will only execute and it will stop until it reach the value of 0 and it won't print 0 but it will print up to 1. So let us now save this and I'll explain the entire code once I uh, show you how it works inside our browser and let us refresh the page and I think you can see very well that the value starts from 11 and it ends at 1. So what if we wanted to print the value of 0 2? So we only need to go on add the equals to sign and this will mean that the value must be greater than and equals to 0. So let us now save this and again we shall refresh the page and so we can see that the 0 has been added to our list. So now let us analyze this code for a few minutes. We first start off by declaring a variable that is i and initializing it with the value of 11 and then we go on defining the keyword do and inside the curly braces we use the write output function built-in function and we tell the compiler that every time you go on iterating start from the value 11 the initial value of i must be 11 and because we do not have a condition given to the first part of our loop the compiler will print the value of 11 first then it will subtract 1 using this decrement operator from the value of 11 and it will become 10 then it will check whether the value of i the value contained inside the variable i is still greater than 0 is still greater than or equals to 0 so it sees that the value 10 that we just got is still greater than the value of 0 so it goes back to the loop and it uh, starts again it starts the iteration process again the first thing it does is to print the value of the value of 10 on the browser so the value 10 is printed on the browser then it tells the compiler that it needs a new line for the next value so that's why I have added the BR tag of HTML and I have concatenated it or added it to our variable I next thing it does is that it subtracts one from its previous value so the previous value we had was uh, 10 so it subtracts one and it gets nine so when it gets nine it then again goes on and checks whether the value is still greater than equals to 10 so because nine is greater than or equals to 10 so it goes back to the loop or iteration and it starts over so this way it goes and on and on and until it reaches zero it stops the program and it finishes the script here so this is what do while loop does it goes on iterating at least for once before going to check the condition so at least for once it does the iteration process and then it goes on checking the condition if the condition is not met the the process stops and we only have one iteration at least but in a while loop we do not have at least one iteration because the condition has to be checked first so if the condition is false at the first moment the loop won't execute anyway so this is the main difference between the do while and the while loop so the next and the last loop we are going to use or we are going to see today is the for loop the for loop is another loop it's also a brother loop perhaps uh, the brother or sibling loop for the while loop because it's a more compact way of using the while loop so let's have a look how we can use it so first of all we need a new page for this and let us save this as for loop dot cfm and as usual we're going to start off with the cf script and end it with the cf script so let me remind you of one thing that if you're still confused if you still need some help check out the description below this video and you will find a link to the slide share presentation that i've created i've created that presentation for free you can check out all those things all those uh, loops errors 
and conditionals in that and if you have any further question please go on comment below leave your comments and I'll try to answer all of them so let us now get back to our code so we were talking about for loop a for loop is certainly a compact way of packaging a while loop so we first start off with the for statement with the for keyword and the condition needs to be checked first it's unlike the do while loop but it's quite like the while loop and then comes the curly braces so inside the condition we define everything from variable to condition to iteration so it has three parts three main parts the first is the initialization of the variable the second is the conditioning part of the variable and the third is the iteration part of the variable so there are three main parts to a for loop let us first use the example that we initially used in our while loop so in our while loop we have seen that we need to first initialize a variable with a certain value and then we are going to iterate it through a certain number of times so we had to write perhaps about six or six lines of code for that but in for loop we just need two lines of code how is that possible first we need to initialize a variable we're going to stick to that example so we're going to initialize the variable i with the value of zero so the first part is done and remember that we always end each of these parts this iteration this initialization and conditioning parts with a semicolon you can't use a comma in here you must remember that this is a statement by itself this is a statement by itself so it needs to end with a semicolon so we have defined we have declared and initialized a variable inside our loop inside our for loop and then we need the condition because the condition is important and we need to define how long the loop will iterate so we are going to tell the compiler that we are going to iterate until we reach the value of 10 and please print the value of 10 to inside our browser and then let's finish this statement off we have done our initialization part this first part is called the initialization because we are initializing a value initializing a variable with a value certain value in our case it's zero and then we are placing a condition and we're saying the loop shall iterate until it reaches the value of 10 and now what we're going to do is we're going to place the iteration so what is this iteration it's just the increment operator that we have seen it's just going to add one each time until it reaches the value of 10 and finally we need our write output function from cold fusion and then the same thing the function is going to print out the value of i each time initially it's going to have zero but uh, along the process of iteration it's going to change its value so concatenate it with the string that holds a beer tag and let's finish this off I'll explain the whole entire thing once more after I show you how it works inside our browser so let's save this and let us get back to our browser we named it for loop dot cfm I think you can clearly see that the loop starts from zero and it ends the counting at exactly the value of 10 so what happens inside our script is that it tells the compiler to initialize the variable i0 and it must iterate the loop or the loop must go on looping until it reaches the value of 10 and each time it does not reach the value of 10 go on adding 1 to the previous value of uh, i so let's just take the example of this first or the initial value of zero so what it does the loop sees that the first value of i is zero then it prints the value on the browser and then again when it sees the value of the i is still less than 10 then it goes on adding one and again it prints one on the next line as it prints one on the next next line it the again goes on checking the condition the condition tells that one is less than 10 so it goes back to the iteration 
and adds one to it so it becomes two and the two is placed on the browser then again the two is checked with the condition the two is still less than 10 so again it goes back to the iteration part and this part adds one again and it becomes three and it is now printed on the browser this way the iteration continues until the value 10 is reached so that was all about looping the next topic we are going to be introduced to is array array is another kind of list but it's different it has dimensions it has first dimension second dimension and third dimensions there can be three dimensions so we are going to use array with our lists to understand how we can store and organize our data more acutely